Before we begin, we are going to look basically at the correlation between vitamin D levels and COVID-19. And it's just a strong correlation. But before we can get into that, we really have to look at the difficulty and basically trying to find a one size fits all for COVID-19. And this article right here exemplifies it very well. So let's get right into it. And then we'll go into the vitamin D because we're looking kind of like for something which covers all groups of COVID-19. Yes, all groups. To proceed as follows. COVID-19 genetic network analysis provides snapshot of pandemic origins. The team used data from virus genomes sampled across the world between December 24, 2019 and March 4, 2020. The research revealed three distinct variants of COVID-19. It's real interesting. Consisting of clusters of closely related lineages for state labeled A, B, and C. Colleagues found that the closest type of COVID-19 to the one discovered in bats, type A. The original human virus genome was present in Wuhan, but surprisingly was not the city's predominant virus type. Mutated versions of A were seen in Americans reported to have lived in Wuhan, and a large number of A-type viruses were found in patients from the U.S. and Australia. Wuhan's major virus type B was prevalent in patients from across East Asia. However, the variant didn't travel much beyond the region without further mutations, implying a founder event in Wuhan or resistance against this type of COVID-19 outside East Asia, according to the researchers. The C variant is the major European type found in early patients from France, Italy, Sweden, and England. It is absent from the study's Chinese mainland sample, but seen in Singapore, Hong Kong, and South Korea. Now, is that intriguing or what? You normally think of COVID-19 as being one size fits all across geographies, but we have an A, a B, and a C. And the more you delve into it, the more mystery comes from it. But now let's get into the vitamin D itself. All right, now before we get them, why we're we looking at vitamin D. Here's clinicaltrials.gov. From you can see right here, we have about 524 studies currently in relation to COVID-19. Now let's look and see how many of those studies have been completed. Zero. So that leaves us to a lot of correlation. And by the way, the one in ivermectin, there's two studies in ivermectin we've covered before. Uh, I mean, the ivermectin we've covered before, there's two studies, one in Egypt and one in Iran. None here in the United States as follows. But so when we look at dietary supplements, basically trying to find a kind of commonality between different types of COVID-19 and potential assistance, we can find correlation. So we look at clinicaltrials.gov, which I truly recommend you utilize to give you insight into what's being researched. We find quite a few on dietary supplements. Now, of course, a lot of vitamin C because of uh, basically pneumonia, lung inflammation, so on and so forth, but we're trying to reduce susceptibility. So we're gonna look more towards vitamin D. And if you look at the chart, you'll see D2 and D3. So let us proceed with this as follows. Now we're looking at population studies in reference to correlation. Please forgive me if I speak kind of fast because we have a lot of ground to cover. All right, so, I have it upside down. So we look at basically the vitamin D levels in the COVID-19 cases per million of the population in reference to mortality and basically also in regard to number of cases. So those charts gave a strong correlation into the next research article, which we're about to refer. Now again, correlation is not causative. It just means a strong correlation, which requires greater insight. Let's put it that way. To proceed as follows. From a wonderfully laid out study, the role of vitamin D in prevention of coronavirus disease 2019, infection and mortality. All right, we're gonna go right from the abstract to the results. So we're gonna highlight this one particular section here as follows, quoting the researchers. We found a very significant correlation between the mean vitamin D levels and the number of cases of COVID-19 per million of the population. Now we're gonna go into the discussion itself. This gives you an idea of the vitamin D levels. Now this is animals and I'm gonna give you the relation between animals and nanograms uh, in a bit. But look how low it is. Now I found out in Northern Italy, for example, they don't fortify the foods as far as I'm aware. 
in reference to vitamin D, and vitamin D deficiency is rampant. And I'm not just talking being low. I'm talking really, really low, severe rickets-type deficiencies. But to proceed as follows. The Seneca study showed a mean serum vitamin D level of 26 nanomoles a liter in Spain, 28 nanomoles a liter in Italy, 45 nanomoles in the Nordic countries and older people. Severe deficiency is defined at basically lower than 30 nanomoles. In Switzerland, the mean vitamin D levels are 23. In nursing homes and in Italy, 76% of the women over 70 of age have been found to have circulating levels below 30. Now, again, don't confuse with nanograms. There are countries with a high number of COVID-19 cases. These, apologize, these are countries with a high number of COVID-19 cases and the aging people is the group with the highest risk of morbidity and mortality with reference to SARS-CoV-2. COVID In conclusion, quoting, we found significant relationships between vitamin D levels and the number of COVID-19 cases and especially the mortality caused by this infection. The most vulnerable groups of population for COVID-19 is also the one that had the most efficient or was the most efficient in vitamin D itself. And it goes into vitamin D has already been shown to protect against acute respiratory infections and is shown to be safe. We believe that we should advise vitamin D supplementation to protect against COVID-19 infection. All right, to give you an idea on how incredibly low that is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna post both these up together in reference to basically the Office of Dietary Supplements from the National Institute of Health. And this is their chart. Now you can see the comparison now, you can see leading to rickets. That's how incredibly low the vitamin D level is. The first thing they should be doing is basically exploring that issue and supplementing a lot of these elderly with vitamin D to boost their system or defenses against COVID-19 if this correlation ends up being causative. But even then, if it's that low, regardless of that, vitamin D can at least help with other potential uh, ailments, so to say. All right, now we are gonna go to a published from Tilda. Another reduction as far as confirmation, to proceed as follows. In this report, we aim to describe the importance of vitamin D for immune function, the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency and vitamin D supplement use in Ireland by age group, gender, geographic location, by obesity, lung disease, particularly vulnerable with COVID-19. Describe those most at risk of deficiency and the best source of vitamin D and recommendation to improve status. See the thinking. By compiling this report, we hope the information given can help the migration mitigation of the negative health consequence of COVID-19. So populations are beginning to look at this. And it's a concern too, because you look at basically people being uh, uh, stay at home. Well, stay at home should not mean stay indoors, especially the vulnerable populations which are already low in vitamin D. You can see what can happen. For example, children, which basically, if you're going to school and they're getting milk, vitamin D fortified, so on and so forth, elderly now are indoors all the time, that could only exacerbate it or increase greater susceptibility. So basically, maybe a little bit of sun time, if not supplementation itself, but to proceed as follows. All right, we want to look at the chart, for, and again, I want to bring up the first where this study is from, vitamin D deficiency in Ireland implications for COVID-19 results from the Irish longitudinal study on aging tilde. All right, now let's look at the, basically the vitamin D deficiency uh, graphic we have right here. Now, who is at risk of deficiency? Now keep that little square in mind we are gonna compare that to the CDCs who's at risk of deficiency. Let's keep both of them together. Correlation is not causation, but at least it's a start. And it's eerie. Now, if you look at it and you begin to think, all right, well, certain ethnic groups which tend to be deficient in vitamin D and who it's ravaging the most, the correlations become stronger and stronger. Hopefully not adding to something called confirmation bias. But that is for data analytics to define However, though, this is something to take hold. And vitamin D levels are that low, you might as well start somewhere. But to proceed as follows. Now, what I want to do is this. These are two great studies. All the links will be there as follows. I don't make recommendations in reference to amounts, but I found this great little explanation for here, COVID-19 functional medicine resources, which I'll have all the links also in reference to the studies themselves. But this is a great one because it also can give the hazards of too much or too little, or contraindication, so on and so forth. But the reference points of all the nutrients, hypothetically, that may aid in basically fending off COVID-19. 
Again, a lot of speculation, a lot of weird things on the internet, but however, there's got to be data at least to back up uh, the hypothesis, or at least the recommendation. And these guys, or girls, or guys, did actually a pretty darn good job. So I have the link here, and again, reference here is vitamin D, and wonderful, wonderful job. Now, we're going to go to also something, a tragic aspect of collateral damage. Oh, by the way, on vitamin D, vitamin D requires magnesium and a few other minerals, but I want to focus on the magnesium aspect. I included in our COVID-19 playlist uh, why magnesium is vitally important uh, in reference to boosting active vitamin D levels. Hypothetically, you could have plenty of vitamin D, but with not adequate magnesium, those vitamin D levels never become activated. And I'll give you the research link to that as well. We covered it video-wise a while ago, but still it's good to at least review so people just don't do vitamin D and not take in the other complementary nutrients to help uh, support it. But to proceed as follows. This is really something that kind of uh, is a failure in the propaganda it representing to uh, behavior modification in reference to COVID-19. I have no clue where the word social distancing came from. I mean, seriously, it's not a unit of measure. And the Journal of American Medical Association Psychiatry Aspect did a wonderful, eloquent job in expressing why these words or terms can be dangerous, especially to people which have mental health challenges. And this is important, and still, it's something we need to bring up. Physical distancing, yes. I don't even know where social uh, distancing would fit, and I run into uh, doing sentiment analysis uh, analy analytics or anywhere along those lines. What is social distancing? As far as I'm concerned, when I hear social distancing, it means reduction in empathy. And that is the one thing, the one challenge that we should not be introducing into this uh, pandemic is by saying, oh, social distancing, which actually sounds more like a reference to a form of hostility. So if at all possible, especially reference to wonderful, wonderful people in these viewpoints from the journal, journal bleh, Journal of American Medical Association change the language to physical distance. You could still be physical distance without having to be socially distant. Again, social distance is not anything. All it really means is possibly reduction in empathy, but it's not a unit of measure. You're not gonna find that on a ruler. Physical distance, yes. So if you could do anything for people, for the mental health involved, start utilizing the word physical distance as opposed to social distance. Oh, that's a little loud, I apologize. Again, as always, all the links will be there. Thank you very much for listening. Again, vitamin D is what I could find the strongest correlation. A lot of nutrients may help, but the strongest correlation at this point in time seems to be focusing head on with vitamin D. Links will be there, DOI citations to everything we discussed here. And as always, gratitude, Thank you, thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you all once again in the next seven days. Ralph signing off, catch us in a bit.